Hello and good afternoon, CSI 158, Section 841 and 847 students at Anne Arundel Community College for the second eight-week term in the Cisco Networking Academy curriculum, Routing and Switching Essentials. This is the Packet Tracer tutorial activity for Packet Tracer 7.1.3.6, where we're going to take a look at what convergence looks like, and we're going to be using the RIP protocol, RIP routing protocol. Okay. So we've got our addressing table here, some objectives. We're going to view the routing table of a converged network. We're going to add a new land to the topology, and we're going to watch the network converge. All right, so let's jump right in. And here we have part one. It says, use the show commands and interpret the output. So show the directly connected networks of R1. And we should see two directly connected networks here that are part of R1. So let's go ahead and pull up the R1 router. And we'll jump into the CLI where we're going to be at user exec mode. We'll go into privilege exec and I'm going to type show IP route connected. Now if I do a question mark, you'll notice that that's it. There are no options there, so we'll do show IP route connected and we see two routes as we would expect. The serial interface, which is directly connected to R2, which is 192.168.1.0, it's a slash 24. And then we also see the directly connected route from gigabit ethernet 00, zero which is 209.165.0.0 slash 24 and so if we roll back up here in the addressing table you can see R1 the gig 00, zero interface here there's a gig 01 interface which doesn't appear to be connected yet and then the serial 000, zero, zero interface which is 192.168.1.2 okay so it says show the running configuration on R1, what routing protocol is in use. So we'll do show run, and you can do the enter key, or the return key, and that's going to take you a line at a time, so we can kind of slow it down and see what's going on here. So there's our gig00 interface, there's our gig01 interface, and we can also see the serial interface. Alright, VLAN1 is down, and so we're currently using the RIP routing protocol. And as you can see, there are two statements there. There's a network statement for the 192.168.1.0 network, and there's also a network statement for the 209.165.0.0 network. And so if you pay close attention here, you'll notice that this, the 192.168.1, is a class C address, and the 209.165.0.0 is also a class C address. All right. And that's about all we've got in the config. So our next step, it says, are the IP addresses in the configuration advertised by RIP the same as those that are connected? And that's yes. Are these IP addresses assignable? Network or broadcast addresses? Those are network addresses. So it says, show the networks of R1 learned through RIP. How many are there? So let's do show IP route RIP. And right now, we see a single a single network that has been learned by the RIP routing protocol. And so the R here in the first column indicates that this has been learned by RIP. The next statement is the network that we're learning, which is the 10.0.0.0 slash 8. The administrative distance of the RIP routing protocol is 120. The hop count from router 1 to get to this network, it's one hop, and we would get there via the 192.168.1.1 IP address or the interface on this router. That's how we would get there. I apologize, not the interface on the router. So next hop IP, so it's going to be over here on router 2. And it's been good for 17 seconds was our last update and it was out serial 000. So you'll notice when I said 192.168.1, that is the serial 000 interface of router 2. Right? So via this next hop IP out this interface, that's how we would get to this network. All right. So it says, show all of the networks that R1 has in its routing table. So that would be a show IP, oops, show IP route. And you can see there's only one network that's been learned via RIP. And it's that same network that we're looking at here, 
the 10.0.0.0 slash 8, right? So there's directly connected networks, and then you've got the local entry for those networks. All right, so repeat step one and two on R2, and let's compare the output. So I'll slide this over here, and now we're going to take a look at R2. I'll pull these guys in side by side here. All right. So on router 2, we're in user exec mode. We'll go to privilege exec mode. So I'm going to do a show IP route connected. We'll see what we see. So we have two directly connected routes. There's the 10.0.0.0 slash 8. And then we also have the 192.168.1.0 slash 24, which is our directly connected link on that serial link. If I do a show IP route rip, you can see that we're learning about the 209.165.0.0 slash 24. The administrative distance of that route, again, for RIP, the default is 120. The hop count is a 1. And it's via this interface. And this interface here, remember we're on router 2 now, so we're on this router here. And that 192.168.1.2 is this interface. And so this is the interface from which we are learning about this network. Right? And again, it's out that serial 000 interface on our router. And so now I'll do a show IP route. And as you can see, we've got the directly connected 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 slash 8, the lo local entry for that, the connected for the 192.168.1.2 on the serial link, the local IP for that, and we have our route that we're learning from router 1 on router one's interface with this IP address, which is the 209.165.0.0 slash 24. Okay. So verify the state of the topology. So ping PC3 from PC2. So I'm going to jump onto PC2. And let me, while we're looking at that, let me go ahead and take a quick look at the IP address for PC3, which is 10.0, oops, ping 10.0.0.2. Okay, so I'm trying to ping PC3, and it's not working from PC2. Wait, and there it goes. All right, so it arped out to find out where it was at, because it wasn't on the local subnet, and then the pings work. All right, so we can ping PC3 from PC2 says show the interface status on router 2. Two interfaces should have assigned addresses. So how do we see the interface status? We do a show IP interface brief. Okay, and there are only two interfaces with IP addresses assigned. Gig 00 and serial 000. All right, say so show the interface status on R1. So we'll pull up R1 now and we'll do a show IP interface brief and these are great commands to run for troubleshooting we've got three interfaces here that have assigned IPs however you'll notice gig 00 is currently down the protocol is down so nothing connected in there alright so add a new LAN to the topology so we're gonna add an Ethernet cable so correct the connect the correct Ethernet cable type from switch 1 to the appropriate port on R1 and so it just says the appropriate port from switch 1 to R1. So let's check up here. Does it tell us which port it needs to be? It doesn't. But we know we have to be in gigabit Ethernet 0, 0 slash 1 on R1. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the connection types. We're going to pick our straight through cable. We're going to say gigabit Ethernet 1, 1. And we'll come up here to gigabit ethernet 01 so now we've just added in this new connection we're bringing this new network online it says ping PC1 to PC2 after the affected switch 1 port turns green was the ping successful and so what we're waiting for here is we're waiting for spanning tree to converge which is different than waiting for your layer 3 protocol which would be RIP or OSPF or EIGRP so we would also need those layer 3 protocols to converge when we're making changes at layer 3, which would be to the routing protocols. So spanning tree protocol handles our layer 2 convergence, and so now you can see that light is green, so now we fully converged. 
All right, so PC1 to PC2, let me confirm the IP. So let me get PC1 up here, and let's try to ping PC2. And we would expect that this is probably not going to work, but let's see. Ping 64.100.0.2, which is ourselves. All right, so we're working good. Now let's drop back here. Let's ping PC2, 209.165.0.2. All right, and actually we can ping across to PC2, but what about PC3? So ping 10.0.0.2, and let's see if we can make it over to PC3. So the first request times out, and we may end up with additional timeouts here, because again, we can ping PC2 because we're directly connected into the same router, right? Even though we suspected it might not work, it does. But have, coming across this serial link, we're clearly having some issues here. All right, so all of our pings failed. So let's drop down here and see what our next step is. Configure a route. So from real-time mode to simulation mode, but we're going to go ahead, we're going to stay in real-time mode. So on router 1, I'm going to pull this up, and we're going to say global config mode, router rip, and I'm going to add in a new network statement. So if I do a do show run real quick, Let's take a look at the state now. You can see our, our global RIP routing config has two networks in it. So what we're doing is we're adding a new network. So I'm going to say network 64.0.0.0. It's a class A address. And we do not have the no auto summary set. So we're going to leave it at network 64.0.0.0. And we're going to hit enter. So now we've added a new network. And so we'll type in. I'm going to save this with a write mem. So now if I do a show IP route, you can see we're still learning that single 10 dot from over on router 2. So that's good. We'll go ahead and close this down. And it's going to ask us, it says, watch the networks converge. So use the debug on router 2. So I'll do debug IP rip. So we're also going to debug IP routing. All right. And so as you can see here, we've got some entries coming in. So on router 2, we received a version 1, a RIP version 1 update from 192.168.1.2, which is this interface here on router 1. And it's on serial 000. Our serial 000 is where we receive the update. And as you can see, there we go. So it's building the up, building the update entries. So it sees this network with a metric of two. It sees the 192.168.1 metric, which is its serial interface with a metric of one. And those are the hops, how many hops it would take to get to those networks. And then a V1 update. And as you can see, we're doing RIP V1. And so remember that RIP V1 simply does broadcasts, right? It broadcasts out to everybody okay and again more updates right receiving updates and it's also sending some updates and so that's what it looks like when we make those changes so now we're gonna go ahead and see can we ping PC3 from PC1 so we'll pull PC1 back up and now let's see if I can ping across and absolutely we can do that because now both of these routers are fully converged they know about the networks that they've learned and so on router 2 let's take one more look I'm gonna do an undebug you all right and that means undebug everything so I've stopped all debugging okay so if I do a show an IP route rip you can see that router 2 is learning about <clears throat> excuse me Router 2 is learning about the 10 dot, I'm sorry, the 64.0.0 and the 209.165, right? So it's learning about those two networks over the RIP routing protocol, and it's learning those from router 1. And then what is router 1 learning from router 2? So show IP route RIP. And as you can see, it's only learning about the 10 dot because that is the only network behind router 2. And so that's the network that's being advertised out. And so again, if I do a show IP route, there's my full routing table for router 1. Show IP route, 
And here's my full routing table for router 2, which is learning about two networks, right? The 64.0.0.0 slash 8 and the 209.165.0.0 slash 24. And those two networks are here behind router 1. And so basically, what the routing protocol is doing and what we've configured it to do is we've told router 1, I want you to advertise these two networks here over to router 2 so that the network on router 2 and router 2 know how to get to these networks and then vice versa for router 2 advertising the 10.0.0.8. All right, so we'll close these down. Okay, so that was the Packet Tracer Activity 7.1.3.6 and I hope this has helped you understand routing convergence and what that looks like and again we used the RIP routing protocol and we added a new network in and then saw that we had connectivity between all the different networks in our topology. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you this week.